What's up guys, welcome back to Mikey Yourself. In this week's video, we're gonna talk preventive maintenance on some of the equipment we use in the shop on a regular basis to make sure we extend the life of our tools as best as we can. All right guys, so what am I talking about? Now, if you're a mechanic, you have a garage, you have a shop, whatever it is, you probably have these two very important tools. And if you live out in a rural area or you're subject to a lot of uh, outages, you probably have this more likely, even if you don't wrench on your own stuff. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about a generator and an air compressor. So, I will tell you right now, I am extremely guilty of neglecting these two pieces of equipment. Now, my generator, I live in Southern California, and I don't necessarily have many problems with power outages where I'm at. Again, I'm in the city, so it's not like um, we have, you know, the same issues uh, as, as, say, if you live in a more rural area. However, I've owned this generator for a few years and I have not changed the oil on this thing since I bought it. Now, I will tell you, I haven't run it that much. Only the 30 minutes every three months that they tell you to do as, as part of the kind of normal maintenance, right? To keep it going, keep it good. Um, so really, I have less than 100 hours uh, on this piece of equipment. However, that oil has been in there for a long time. And I just recently ran it for about 20 hours over the course of two days. On the air compressor, this one I've had probably for about 15 years. I don't think Harbor Freight sells this version anymore. I think they've switched over to a new name. Um, probably looks the same, but different name. Anyhow, I've owned this for about 15 years and I've never changed the oil. Now let's talk about what the oil should look like and um, you know, just some general stuff about it, right? So let's look. Now on the air compressor, you got a looking glass here, which you don't have on a generator. And this, you can actually see where your oil level is. And on mine, it's actually a little higher probably than it should be. However, it's relatively clear. So that has been one of the things that has, I'll say, prevented me from being so quick to swap out the oil is the fact that I could see it. It's at a good level and it looks relatively clear. On the, air, on the uh, generators, I, at least on my model, you don't have that. There's literally just the drain plug um, and then the fill port and you fill it up until it starts to spill out and that's it. So there's not much to it, but in either case, the recommendation from um, the manufacturers on most of these things is to change your oil out um, every six months or every 100 operating hours, whichever comes first. Um, and like I said, I've done neither. Um, although I don't think I've ever hit a hundred hours on my generator and maybe I have, maybe I haven't, I don't know how many Phillips it would take to make a hundred hours on my, uh, air compressor, but it's just good maintenance. It's old oil. Let's swap it out and, uh, let's go through that process. Okay guys, so we're gonna kick things off with the compressor because this is probably gonna be the easiest of the two. I don't have to lift anything up. I don't have to get any anything. Um, I will just need to put a, uh, a funnel and a drain to I believe this bolt here. Now I did notice, or I looked up, not this particular model, but the newer model of this gen, uh, air compressor and they say to undo this bolt. So I'm not quite sure I could be wrong. I'm gonna try it with this one here. I think this is where the oil lives. And then your fill, put, your fill vent port is right up here. So you're going to want to open that up uh, to at least let the air come in. So that way it drains a bit easier. And then what we're going to do is uh, fill it up to the proper height using this compressor, air compressor oil. So this is uh, some 32 ounce thing that you can get right at Harbor Freight. I don't know what the difference is between, say, this stuff and regular motor oil. It's dirt cheap, so I didn't mind buying what essentially they're calling specifically made for air compressors. So let's go ahead and drain it and see what happens.
All right, so our oil is now out. Throw your bolt back in. We'll tighten that up and then uh, we'll fill her up. So that's a pretty simple process. Just funnel in here. And like I said, you gotta look for your, um, you know, your markings or whatever you have for your model. I'm gonna have to look mine up since this is different than the, uh, the newer style. And we should be done. Got the oil in there. I double checked. I went to uh, Harbor Freight's site and they still have the manual for the compressor. And according to their their deal, it shows that you should be running basically in the middle of the glass. I'm just a little full, uh, a little bit over it in the middle, dead center. But if you look, there's like that little circle in there. Basically, the top of the circle is your max fill or your overfill line, and I'm barely getting ready to touch it, so should be good to go there. But that's it. This is a really, really simple process. Thank God for that. And all you need to do, it doesn't take the full 32-ounce bottle. Maybe if you have a larger unit, um, like the 60-gallon or something like that, that might be a different story. All right, so we talked about the um, drain plug. On these to make sure you don't have any moisture in your tank so on my particular air compressor it's on the bottom side so you just undo this bolt here and again it'll allow for um, any of the moisture that's gathered up on the bottom to drip out now be very careful in that make sure your tank is empty there's no air in it before you undo that because if you don't that pressure has got to come out somewhere and you just created that opportunity for it to come out. Um, you'll know it as soon as you start undoing it, it'll start hissing at you or whatever. Um, that's a good sign to say, well, hang on, let me take a look. All right, so I'm gonna do mine, let it drain. It's gonna take a little while. I wanna make sure all that stuff gets out of there, not a big deal, but that's it. I would recommend running your generator or your generator, running your compressor for maybe a couple of minutes just to get that oil moving around in there. Uh, but you should be good to go just because that stuff coats. And again, it sits at the bottom all the time anyways, so not a big deal. But that's how you change the oil in your uh, air compressor. Okay, so now we're gonna tackle our generator. What I've done is I've kind of rolled it up on some ramps here that I have, and I got my scissor jack on the other end just to give me a little bit of clearance to make my life a little bit easier. It's not a ton easier, but um, yeah, a little bit. So if I understand things correctly, this is my drain plug. So we're going to undo that. I've got, this is, this is a doggy pee pad. These work really, really good, um, for catching any kind of drips or anything like that. So because of how this is kind of awkwardly placed where it's immediately above a uh, part of the frame here, I'm going to be able to sneak in a funnel to catch it to allow it to drain into the pan but it's going to take me a second so chances are we're probably going to get a bit a little bit of leakage there but we got the pad there it just helps make the uh, cleanup effort a little bit easier so let's go ahead and uh and drain it so now that we've got our oil drained what we're going to do is go ahead and fill her up and the way you do that is pretty simple you just use a fill uh, a funnel in there um <clears throat> It calls out for 10W30. I'm using full synthetic just because I'm so bad at this. <laughs> so hopefully that'll provide a little bit more uh, life and kind of make up the, the difference of my bad habits. So we're gonna go ahead and feed that in. The thing that's kind of a beast about this is the angle at which the funnel is. It's, it's, it's almost level. So that kind of makes it harder to fill. So you just kind of have to work it in there and wait until it starts to just start to trickle out the top or not the top, but um, from the hole and that's when you know you're full. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out real quick. Oil's in, it's less than a quart. It's not very much at all. Um, this is a pretty small motor. I think this is a 212 cc Predator engine. So if you wanna look up the specs on that, that'll tell you exactly what it is I'm running. What I think I might end up doing as a future modification, because it's really a pain to fill this up um, at the angle that it is, you could either get a funnel with the uh, like bendy straw thing um, to fill that up or a tube. 
Uh, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is trimming this plastic because there's nothing right here. It's just straight up plastic, but giving myself a hole there so that way I can get a better angle at it and it'll just help out with the uh, refilling process. So it's nothing urgent just because, again, don't change it that often on this, every 100 uh, hours or um, six months, kind of whatever comes first is what they say. So yeah, so let's jump over to the other side and we'll swap out the uh, spark plug. Okay, so to access your spark plug, you're on the back side of the engine. Um, you just got the um, spark plug wire there and you can access your plug there. It is a uh, 21 millimeter or 13 sixteenths, I believe. Yep. So we'll take that out. Um, it is kind of far in there, so you might need to get a uh, an extension. Luckily, I have the swivel head um, socket. Makes life a lot easier. We'll pull that off. Take a look at it and see how bad it is. Actually, not looking too bad. I mean, it's got some carbon buildup on it, but that seems to be pretty normal. I don't see anything that's jumping out to me. So, this is some Torch F7 TC, whatever. Um, again, this is the, the plug that came with it. So, we'll go ahead and swap out to the NGK. And what you'll need to do is make sure that you look up your gapping that's specific for your model. In this particular case, I am at um, 0 0.027 to 0 0.034 like, or something like that. Uh, so we'll go right here. Make sure my gap is good. It looks like it's, well. All right. Okay. So now that we're gapped, we'll throw a little bit of anti-seize on it. Throw it in. Tighten it up. And then we'll let this thing run for a couple of minutes to get that oil kind of going through it and see how this spark plug does. Make sure there's no... Uh, issues. I don't anticipate any. This is pretty straightforward stuff. None of it's complicated. Okay, so we've got the new spark plug in there. Oddly enough, there isn't a torque spec for this according to the manual. They have you tighten it until it meets the head and then you want to turn it one half to two thirds more, um, which is, I don't know, kind of sketchy when they don't have a torque value. So, you know, just kind of you know, have to use your, your best judgment. Again, you know, you feel it getting really nice and snug on there. I'd say back off. Don't don't really push it because if you strip that out, then you're gonna be in a world of hurt. All right, so let's go ahead and give her a crank and see if uh, she starts up as expected. Fuel on. Switch on. There you have it guys, first pull started right up. So that's good to go. I know that now my oil is good for at least six months or 100 operating hours. I'm confident I'll hit that six month mark way before I hit the 100 uh, operation hours on that thing just because again, I don't use it enough. The air compressor, you know, it's just peace of mind. Um, the oil coming out of that was very clean. So it, you know, yeah, it is what it is. Better to be safe than sorry. So we got that knocked out. So I appreciate you watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up. If you enjoy the content, we have all kinds of different videos, whether it's working on stuff within the garage, sometimes to throw a couple of home type things in there. 
Um, it's all about doing the work yourself, or in my case, micing it myself, right? Uh, become a subscriber. Want to hear your feedback. Like to hear your experiences. If you have questions, I'll do my best to answer those for you. Again, I'm not a professional at any of these particular things. I'm just a guy in the garage who likes to have fun and enjoy working on stuff. So if you're like me, then let's partner up and continue the journey together. And until that next video does post, I hope to see you in the wind.